Good news for Enbridge, good news for the federal government today. It got the green light from a joint review panel for its Northern Gateway Pipeline proposal. But the project has been facing fierce opposition from some First Nations. And today, environmental groups are already warning they will exercise all powers from legal action to civil disobedience to block the project. There are still 209 conditions applied to this, and the government has 180 days to decide whether they'll go through with it or not, although Joe Oliver on this program yesterday signaled that they'll do the consultation, they'll make sure everyone's on board, he says, but he obviously has been very much an advocate of this pipeline. So why are they so opposed, some people, to the pipeline, and how far will some groups go to stop it now? From Vancouver, I'm joined by Art Sterrett, the Executive Director of the Coastal First Nations. Mr. Sterrett, great to have you back on the program. Uh, the panel has approved the pipeline, 209 conditions. What's your reaction? Well, Evan, uh, for starters, they haven't approved the pipeline. They have recommended right. uh, that the project be approved by Cabinet uh, with 209 conditions. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm at a bit of loss because uh, we haven't even been able to see the recommendations yet. Uh, and so we in British Columbia still don't know what the heck is going on here, but we do know that they have recommended it. It's now up to Cabinet to decide. But I, I think we've got to take this with a grain of salt. You've got to recognize that last week there were two reports that went to the federal government. One of them was an expert tanker panel that basically told Canada that uh, we do not have the capability to clean up an oil spill on the coast of British Columbia. And further to that, we had uh, the AFERT report, which told Canada that they are going to have to sit back, step back, and develop a relationship with a group of people, uh, First Nations in B.C., who have rights and title and have the legal right to, uh, to bog this process down for decades if they, if they don't develop the relationship. Coastal First Nations and other First Nations in B.C. are ready to roll up our sleeves and build that relationship with, with Canada and with British Columbia, but the Northern Gateway Project, as we know it, is dead. You think it's dead. Let me, Art, stay with me, Art, stay for a minute. The B.C. Uh, Minister of the Environment, Mary Pollock, is reacting right now. Let me show our audience a bit of that, and I'll come right back to you, Mr. Starrett. Hang in there. And certainly, with Alberta's backing, more apparent. Well, and, and that's precisely my point around jurisdiction and authority. There are things that go beyond that, and social license is a huge part of that. The five conditions are a minimum to get to social license in British Columbia, but even having said that, that they are a minimum, they are a fairly, fairly steep bar to hit. Well, we haven't had a chance to review the conditions in detail. I understand there are 209 of them, but we have five more. And those conditions, in many ways, trump the rest of them. We need to see that not only are there recommendations for safety, but that Enbridge, as a company, can show us evidence that they can actually meet those conditions and, in turn, meet our five conditions. Well, there's another example of how the five conditions we set have changed the framework of this debate. Anybody who has seen Enbridge's ads has seen a change in their stance and clearly a uh, renewed recognition that they have to address the kind of environmental concerns that arise in British Columbia. Um, we, I, I believe very firmly that that's in large measure because of our pressing of the five conditions that Enbridge itself is now talking about the importance of the environment in their communications. Well, it's one of the reasons that it's so important for the government to stand firmly behind conditions that will bring forward the addressing of the kind of concerns that those groups have. Um, that is the best means to address the kind of passionate 
love that people have for our environment and what it urges them to do when they feel that that's threatened. You can't ultimately solve that just by going through courts. You have to solve that by ensuring that people can trust in not only a process, but that they can see the evidence that their concerns have been addressed. Mary Pollack, the environmental minister in British Columbia, reacting to news that uh, there is going to be a recommendation to approve the Northern Gateway Pipeline for the federal government with 209 conditions. Now, you heard her say BC's got these five conditions. Those five conditions, BC has said to Alberta, no pipeline, they've said to Enbridge and Alberta and the feds, no pipeline unless there is environmental reviews, marine and oil uh, response, spill response process, land spill prevention, aboriginal concerns, and then economic benefits to British Columbia. Those are their five conditions. Those are on top of the 209 uh, conditions that were applied to this green light given today to the Northern Gateway uh, pipeline. And some of those are going to overlap. I've got Art Starrett, the executive director of the Coastal First Nations, reacting. Mr. Starrett, you said even though we heard what the reaction from the NEB is today, you still say the Northern Gateway pipeline is dead? Absolutely, Evan. Uh, you know, they have had the opportunity to address a lot of these concerns over an eight-year period. We've been engaged with these people. And uh, we are no further ahead in terms of understanding them or building a relationship than we were eight or nine years ago. Uh, I, I, I think it's time now to put this project to bed, uh, take all of the rhetoric out of it, and uh, we're, uh, First Nations are reaching out to Canada. Uh, we're, we're relieved that our, our Premier and our ministers are in British Columbia are sticking to their guns and their conditions. We, I, I firmly uh, believe that they're good conditions. Uh, but they need to be met, and, and, and they can't be met by Northern Gateway. It's too well, late. It's well, over. Well, they, they say, look, they say the NEB spent a year conducting hearings through B.C. and Alberta. They said they listened to Aboriginal groups, business leaders. Uh, they, they've said, and this is their case, they've got 199 conditions, now 209 before they'll proceed. The steel will be 20% thicker, and 70% of the route will go through the already disturbed lands. I mean, do these go... Any, any distance to addressing your concerns? <laughs> well, no. Um, uh, Evan, you know, this Northern Gateway project goes right into the heart of the Great Bear Rainforest, right into the heart of the Great Bear Sea. It is the most ridiculous route that anybody ever could have chosen. You're talking 12 hours of very large crude carriers plying these waters, inside waters, in and around islands, 180-degree turns. It, it is a ridiculous idea. Uh, they need to regroup, they need to rethink this, they need to build relationships with First Nations and rebuild the trust that has been lost by this flawed process that Enbridge has subjected us to. Finally, uh, what about the Heisla First Nation? They broke away from the Coastal First Nations uh, group last year, citing that group representatives talked to natural gas development on behalf without their consent. Is there waning opposition? Is opposition to this starting to split? Uh, no, there isn't. Uh, I, I don't believe that for a second. I, uh, you know, the fact that the Heisla moved uh, out of First, coastal First Nations, they have an extremely complicated uh, a bunch of business to deal with, being at the term pole of, of a bunch of LNG projects and a gateway. But I, I know for a fact they haven't changed their position. They're just as strong as ever. And uh, we respect the Heisla. We work with them in, in every room. And, and I don't think there's going to be any change anywhere on Northern Gateway. All right. Well, it's been recommended for approval. Uh, Enbridge is already talking about it. And the government will make its decision. But as Art Starrett, the executive director of the Coastal First Nation, says opposition is still going to fight this. He says it's still dead in the water. Mr. Starrett, always good to have you in the program. Thank you, Evan.